um, yeah, censorship basically just kind of like, you know, limit what you can do. And I understand that uh, it kind of like, you know, protects certain ears and, you know, blocks certain images for being portrayed. And then at the same time, you know, it's up for us really as, you know, as a community to kind of like, you know, censor a certain way when it comes down to that. Okay. Yeah, I definitely feel, uh, you know, the same way. I mean, it's censorship is, it, it has its place. You know, like for an example, I have little nephews. Right. I, di I didn't realize how big my head is. See that? <laughs> I didn't realize how big my head was until I had nephews. And they said, oh, he got a head like his Uncle Cole. And I'm like, what you mean he got an uncle? What, what, what you talking about? They said, you know. I'm like, what? I got, I got here with that head. before. <laughs> you know, yeah, it was very humbling. That, that was like a very, that's when my whole world just opened up. I'm like, wow, all this time I'm walking around with this big old jug head on my shoulders. But, right. um, but there's definitely things I don't want them to see or hear that I don't think they're, they're ready to hear. But at the same time, even like with parenting, that's another good point. Censorship when your kids and stuff. What so? And I think that's something each parent has to make a decision on. That's their responsibility as parents, you know. Um, but at some point, you don't. You know, at some point, you need to sit down and talk with the kids and like, look, okay, now I think you're old enough. I want to talk to you about these things. I want to exactly. show you these things. I want you to be aware of these things. Like right. I know, I know me, like. If if me and my wife ever start opening up production on, in the baby factory department and start having kids, you know, I know I don't I, I don't want my my son or my daughter going into middle school or high school and not talking about <coughs> sex, talking about drugs, talking about all the taboo things that people don't like to talk about publicly. Because if you don't talk to them about those things, they don't know about those things. Exactly. And they're, they're not prepared to deal with those things when they come face to face with those things in real life. And I won't, you know. I'm a teacher at heart, so just imagine how I'll be with my kids. Oh, they're gonna be they're gonna be ready. They're gonna be schooled and prepared. They're gonna be schooling other kids at school. Like my daddy already talked to me about that. I know all about that. Did you know this? That's Did you know that? Be. You know, yeah. And then I, and then I would also encourage them, don't censor what you're doing for me, because if you are doing something, I need to know about it. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather you come right. tell me about something than for you to hide it from me and then find out later. You know what I'm saying? Because for an example, if I had a child and, you know, the kids like, I don't know, let's say he's dabbling in drugs or something like that. I don't want him going over somewhere else's to someone else's house or putting himself in a risky situation because he's trying to hide it from me. I want to know about it, you know, and then we can navigate through that situation, you know. So even from like a parenting standpoint, I think we would all agree like kids should definitely be censored from seeing certain things and hearing certain things, you know. Exactly. But in such a day and time as this, it's like now you have YouTube, you know, which is awesome. I'm a YouTuber. I love YouTube. You know what I'm saying? It's a place like we was talking about earlier, T-Money. Like one thing I love about the Internet is it allows me to connect with people all over the world. And it expands my worldview to hear what other people have to say. Because I come from a really small country town. You know, my, my world was really small growing up. And the internet just opened it up. It just busted it wide open. And I get to meet people from all over the place. I think that's a good, you know, parenting, censorship. Like, it definitely has its place, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then from that point of view, like, from your kids, really, it's, I think it's the, the parents' responsibility to be parents. And that's actually one thing Eminem brought up. He was saying, y'all are talking about I'm ruining your kids' lives and stuff on my lyrics. But he's like, where's, the, where's your parenting at? Like... Cause I know me, like my my mom growing up, I remember going into a record store, and I remember getting Tupac albums. And see, back then they didn't print out the explicit lyrics a lot. On they the, didn't have that program back then, right? Well, well, this they did at this point, but okay. what they would do is they would just they would put a sticker on the CD cover. So what mm -hmm. what we would do is we would go in and we knew like a a music store who would sell to us underage. It's not like we get going in there buying cigarettes or beer, like selling to his underage, contributing to a minor. But um, we'll go there and get it, and he put it in a little brown paper bag, and we would rip the the parental advisory sticker off of it. 
So my mom would check our CDs when we got in the car to make sure that we wasn't buying anything we wasn't supposed to be listening to. Exactly. But where we would slip up at is, you know, we that's when I got my first boom box. <laughs> and I'd just be jamming out, man, Tupac and stuff. And, you know, yep. and yep. I just, I turn it up a little bit too loud and they start hearing certain words like, what? what? <laughs> they come in there, what was that? <laughs> And I'm like, you know, I remember one time my brother had Snoop Doggy Dog doggy style. Yeah. And me and him would go in his room and we'd turn it down really low and we'd listen to it. Like, I mean, it was, we're kids, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, that was a very explicit album. Even the artwork, you know what I'm saying? It was just very explicit. Mm -hmm. And I remember when my mom finally, finally found the tape, she made us jump in our, in our little, uh, little van and she took us to the trash dump. This was before we had any like trash dump services. Like you had to go yeah. to like a trash dump to take your trash. Right. And mm -hmm. she made him throw it in the trash. And that it, it man, he, she punched him in the soul that day. I mean, he was hurt. He was hurt. His little feel because it was like that was a I'm big bad. deal. It wasn't as easy to get music back then as it is now. You couldn't just download mm -hmm. music back then, you know. Yeah. So that was kind of the censorship that me and my brother went through. Uh, that was definitely in place. And uh, even though they, my parents had those regulations in place, we still was trying to break them, you know, but they would reinforce it. So it's not like it was just wide open. You know, they were paying really close attention to like, what we was listening to and stuff like that.